Welcome to Install 102, Installing Expansion Cards. The building block videos are targeted at NetApp and partner engineers, as well as do-it-yourself customers. Always consult the most recent documentation before starting any work. In this video, we discuss how to use the Hardware Universe website, the process to physically install expansion cards into a storage controller, and the process to verify the cards are functioning properly. Here's the backside of a FAS 3200 system with the IO expansion module. The storage controller itself has two expansion slots and the optional IO expansion module can add four more slots. This is a FAS 6200 with the optional IO expansion module. The controller has six expansion slots and the IO module adds ten more expansion slots. Before arriving at the customer site to perform an install, determine what expansion cards were ordered. This can be found on the sales or purchase order. If you do not have access to these documents, you can look them up on the NetApp Support website. Under My Support is a submenu called Order Status. The default search type is Purchase Order for resellers and customers. The NetApp account team gave me the sales order number, so I will search on that. And if I could not find or get access to the sales order purchase number, there's also an option that I can search by company name. The order information comes up, so we click on View Details. and now we can see the actual sales order itself. There's an option to export to Excel and this is something we recommend. So you can save the file to the project folder that goes with the along with the system installation workbook and the log files we'll create. I downloaded the order and then color coded it to make it easier to comprehend. The first thing we want to look for is the storage controller model FAS3250A and the quantity too, so this is an HA pair. We also see that these systems come with an IO expansion module, so they will have plenty of slots for the expansion cards. Then we want to look for the quantity and type of disk shelves. And this will give us an idea of whether this is a one-man job that can be completed in one day or a job requiring additional helpers or multiple days to complete. You also want to double check the type and quantity of cables to start thinking about how to physically arrange the components in the rack or cabinet. And layout planning is covered in the Install 104 video. Now we look for all entries with PCI or PCIe because these indicate expansion cards. And after identifying all the PCI expansion cards, I went ahead and I've recorded them in my checklist in progress. And I'm going to use this information in the hardware universe later. And since this is an HA pair, I know to divide all these numbers by two. And anywhere that number, that final number is greater than two, I will go ahead and record that in my checklist is a reminder that like these 10 gig cards there are two of them so I'll be installing two of these into each controller. Now we log into the hardware universe to determine which expansion slots to install to install the cards into. So since we're looking for adapters we click on the adapters and let's do a search by operating system in this case, it's 8.2 cluster data on tap. These are FAS 3250s. And we'll just go ahead and show the results for all the expansion cards. And since this is an HA pair with the IO expansion modules, click on that. After removing expansion cards from their packing boxes, it can be difficult to tell what type or part number a card is. So the hardware universe contains pictures of the cards from different angles. to make it easier to identify them.
The priority column shows which cards go into a slot when there is a conflict for a slot. Generally, we want high performance cards closest to the PCI bus so they are higher on the priority list. The priority slot assignment column lists the expansion slots a card prefers from most to least preferred. And we see the, the X11117A card and the X1131A and X11382A cards also want to use slot 1. But since the X11117A has priority, and there are two of these cards, they will use slots 1 and 2. And the 31A card will get slot 3, and the 32A will get slot 4. And the next card is the X. 1971A flash cash card. The slot, next slot available is slot 5. And then the SAS HBA, the next available slot is 6. With the information recorded in my checklist, I can proceed to the next step in this task. To demonstrate installing expansion cards, we are using a FAS 3100 with dual controllers in the chassis. The process is the same for all currently shipping FAS and V-Series model. These controllers are being converted into a cluster for a training lab and require installing two 10 gigabit network cards. We learn from the hardware universe the cards should be installed into slots 1 and 2. The first step is to remove the system board from the chassis. We do that by loosening all of the thumb screws and pull the system board out with the handle. System boards have an internal release mechanism to prevent them from accidentally sliding out. With the system board out, rotate it right or left depending on where the cards will be inserted. Loosen the thumb screws to remove the card retention bracket. The bracket has hooks on the ends, so rotate the bracket towards you to remove it. Now we can see the PCI slots, which are no different from the slots in a desktop personal computer. To insert the network card into slot 1, we remove the blanking plate. On this side of the system, the card is installed upside down. Gently push the card in until it is fully seated and the locking pins line up with the card bracket plate. Replace the card retention bracket and tighten the screw. When inserting the system board back into the chassis, slide it until it comes to a complete stop. The handle has a tab that should insert into a recess on the chassis. When you push the handle forward, this finger ensures the system board is fully inserted into the chassis. Finally, hand tighten the thumb screws. Verify expansion card functionality. 
In the following video, we will boot into maintenance mode and verify that the storage controller recognizes the newly installed expansion cards. Like all work we do from the command line, the first step is to start logging our console session. We'll give it a name that will be easy to recognize if we had to look for this file later. When you power on a system, by default, it will automatically boot into data on tap. Since this lab system was brought to the loader prompt, we have to give it the command boot on tap to start the boot up process. Interrupt the boot process by pressing Control C for the boot menu. If you do not see the message, boot menu will be available, then you miss the window to press Control C. Power cycle the system and try again. The battery error message is what happens when you do not use the halt command to power off a NetApp storage controller, like happened on this lab system. The NVRAM batteries stay on to retain any unwritten data in NVRAM. And after three days, the batteries have run out of power and need to be recharged. For our lab system, we'll skip the delay, but for a production system with dead batteries, you should always allow the system to charge for a couple of hours. Select menu item 5 to enter maintenance mode. And as the system's waking up, you'll notice a number of uh, console messages flashing by, and you're looking for a prompt asking if you want to continue with the boot process. Enter, enter Y to continue with the boot. The most basic check to use is the sysconfig minus V command followed by the expansion slot number. This shows the system recognizes the new card. Now if the card appears to be malfunctioning, use the SL die command which is uncovered in the maintenance 101 video. If the storage system will be installed into a non-NetApp branded cabinet, we recommend viewing the install 103 video to learn how to assemble and install the Universal Rail Kits. If you will be installing into a NetApp cabinet, move on to install 104 on rack mounting the storage system. 